Hey guys, how's it going? It's Andy from Magoo Investing. Happy Wednesday. So I really appreciate all the birthday wishes from my last video. Uh, in that video, if you missed it, I'll link it above right now. I kind of rewarded myself for my birthday considering I can't really do much else to celebrate. So I decided to buy two of my favorite renewable energy stocks out there. And so that was kind of my way of celebrating my birthday, which is different than probably a lot of other people. Also in that video, I said that I'm gonna be doing a big breakdown of all of your guys' favorite stocks. So if there's a stock that you would like to hear my opinion on, be sure to leave it in the comment section down below and I'll talk about it in a video going up this Saturday. Uh, also, two weeks ago, I made a video talking about why I thought we were gonna be seeing a short squeeze on GameStop, ticker symbol GME. And that was one of the first times that I've kind of gone out of my way to maybe not make a prediction, but kind of explain why I'm taking more of a riskier position. And considering my channel's not that big, I was a little bit worried that, you know, if things go poorly, it was going to look very bad about um, kind of how much experience I have with the overall stock market. But just two weeks later, we are seeing that short squeeze finally. But for people that haven't been checking um, GameStop today, it is up 67% at the time that I'm recording this video as we're seeing the short squeeze. For people that don't know what a short squeeze is, basically you are borrowing the shares from your broker, selling them, and then with the expectation of buying them back at a later date, hopefully at a lower price, and you get to keep the difference in those two prices. As we get some big news that pushes it up, uh, you're not able to hold these short shares forever. This is something that you're going to have to buy back to give back to your broker. And when that happens, the buying pressure pushes the stock up further. And that's why this morning it was up like 15%. Uh, and then as the short sellers had to cover their positions, they had to buy it back. And now that's why it's up 67%. So for anyone that's involved in that trade, congratulations. Uh, I unfortunately did sell a covered call against it. So I limited my profits to $100. Uh, instead of like the $1,500 I would have been making instead. But uh, it does feel good to make uh, a video like that and have it go the right direction that I kind of expected it to. But today I want to talk about some of my favorite kind of stocks and that's social media stocks. I've been very bullish on social media stocks for a long time with stocks like uh, Twitter, Snapchat, and Pinterest. And with the news coming out last week that uh, a lot of these platforms are going to be banning Trump we have seen a little bit of fallout when it comes to these overall stocks. And so in today's video, I wanted to talk about my thoughts on the social media stocks. Uh, and especially if I think that it's a good buying opportunity with the recent dips that we've seen with stocks like Twitter and Facebook. And then towards the end of the video, I'm going to be talking about uh, my overall thoughts on the rest of the two companies. And then I'm going to be ranking the favorite social media stock that I have uh, with these four with Snapchat, Twitter, uh, Facebook, and Pinterest, and give my opinions on which ones I think are the best uh, stocks to buy for my portfolio going forward. But before we get started, I do have to say that I'm not a licensed financial advisor, and this is not financial advice. Anything you hear in this video is just me giving my own opinions on the stock market, and you need to do your own research before making any investment decisions. Also, if you've been enjoying these videos, I really appreciate it with the like and subscribe button, as will help my channel out a lot. You guys have been killing it recently, and I really appreciate all the support. So from the events of last week, many platforms have been banning Trump. Um, and we've been seeing a little bit of fallout. Some of these stocks that have taken the biggest hits, uh, the biggest one has been Twitter so far. When I put up the five day chart for Twitter, you can see that it's down 11.5% in the past five days. And then Facebook was down a little bit more than 7% in the past five days. Uh, and as a result of that, these two stocks have lost a combined $51 billion in market value. Uh, but if you do look at the different breakdowns, uh, I saw that headline and I was like, oh, Facebook is so much larger. And the breakdown is Twitter loses around $3 billion in market value uh, and Facebook is down around 51 because it is so much larger. And so while a 12% move is pretty significant, I kind of want to talk about how this move looks in comparison to some of the other moves we've been seeing with Twitter. And so 12% seems pretty significant, but what I put up um, the one year chart, you can see that this is not unheard of when it comes to Twitter. Usually the moves happen in one day and it's a very choppy chart. Uh, there was the ad bug in late 2019. They had the missed earnings report this past summer, and then they had the hacking fiasco uh, where a lot of well-known people on Twitter got hacked uh, and they put some stuff out about uh, I think it was like Bitcoin and how you can make a bunch of money. So looking at the six month chart uh, and then putting up the all time chart, this 11% move doesn't seem too significant. Looking at Facebook, you're gonna see a similar story. It is a pretty significant move when it comes to uh, how much percentage it's moved in the past couple of days. But when you put it in perspective to its history, it's not that jarring. But I do wanna talk about the impact of the move to remove Trump from these social media platforms. When it comes to political ads, Facebook was the only a social media company that was still allowing political ads. And from the numbers I could find, around 3% of Facebook's revenue came from political ads in the last quarter. And so that ends up being a lot of money, but 3%, losing that isn't gonna be that significant. Also, you can make the argument that since the election is over, these political ads were gonna be going away anyway. 
And so from that, I don't think it's going to be that big of a hit to Facebook. Facebook is a juggernaut when it comes to pretty much any metric that you could possibly see. And probably the most impressive one comes from average revenue per user, which is ARPU. And so looking at that, Facebook is the king uh, with bringing in almost $8 per user compared to Snap at $270 and Pinterest sitting down at $1. And Twitter doesn't publicly report ARPU, but the expectations and the estimates that I've seen uh, puts Twitter at around $4.30 per user. Looking at the revenue chart, yeah, I'm not really worried about the fallout from Facebook. They have been so incredibly stable when it comes to their increases in revenue, and they have so many other revenue streams and platforms with uh, Instagram, WhatsApp, that I'm not really worried about it. But now the interesting situation comes with Twitter, because... Twitter is not as reliable when it comes to revenue and just kind of their overall business compared to something like a Facebook because it is so large. So for the past year, I've talked about why I think Twitter has become a fantastic buy for a long-term investment. The main fact is that I thought the move of politics onto Twitter has really legitimized the business because this has forced a lot of people and probably the older generation that maybe wouldn't have gone to Twitter otherwise. It is now a place where a lot of these politicians are talking to their constituents. Uh, they're having some battles back and forth like what we've been seeing with AOC and Ted Cruz. Uh, but it's become a legitimate place that uh, politics is discussed. And so it's going to be pretty interesting to see how this has an impact uh, on Twitter's daily average users. And so when I put up the revenue chart for Twitter, you can see it is not as pretty as something like Facebook. They do not have the track record of consistent growth. It kind of goes through cycles uh, of ups and downs. And so one of the metrics that I really like looking at, and actually my number one when it comes to looking at uh, social media stocks, comes from monetizable daily active users. And with this graphic, the numbers... Uh, that Twitter saw had some impressive growth for the past like six quarters and then the last quarter it kind of stalled out and they barely saw an increase in daily active users. And so that was not a great thing. They had some uh, nice beats when it comes to revenue and stuff like that in the last earnings report but that disappointing growth on users was a reason why the stock fell. And so with this um, move to ban Trump, and you're going to be pissing off a lot of the extreme conservative side uh, when it comes to the political spectrum, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens uh, with their monetizable daily active users in the next quarter because you do have the impact of removing you know the current president but it's going to be interesting to see what the fallout is because at this point you know they don't have as much of reliance on political ads actually they have no reliance on political ads but as this is the number one thing i look at when it comes to social media stocks with monetizable daily active users until we see that next earnings report i'm really not sure how big of an impact this is going to be but I will say that if we do have a disappointing earnings report for Twitter coming up, I think it's going to be a fantastic buying opportunity. This is a 11% discount already. And I think based off of the track record of the company, anytime that they've missed or beat on earnings, the stock has gone up around 10 to 15%. So if that does happen and we have some disappointing news uh, or maybe the monetizable daily active users contracts for the first time, I think that'd be a fantastic buying opportunity. But right now I'm just going to be waiting on the sidelines to see what happens there. But I will say that one of the things that I'm kind of expecting to happen as a result of this move is I expect to see Twitter try to uh, test out or maybe even fully roll out the subscription model that they've been kind of teasing for a little bit. If you remember last summer, there was a job posting for a position that was going to be researching on the uh, subscription model for Twitter, and it hasn't been talked about a lot recently. And I think that this move uh, of banning Trump is maybe going to have to force their hand into trying to bring in some reoccurring payments and this is going to help them with their stability when it comes to their revenue streams and anytime i've talked about a company that has a subscription model i've always loved it uh, the number one uh, company i think of when it comes to subscriptions comes with adobe ticker symbol adbe and that results in them having a uh, a profit margin of like 96 percent when it comes to their creative suite products and so if twitter tries to roll this out i don't really know how they're going to do it i am kind of worried that it might kind of piss off some of the user base making uh, Twitter go to a subscription model. But if it does provide additional value, I do expect a lot of people to be uh, maybe giving it a shot and see what happens. So that's going to be something I'm going to watch going forward. Um, but I want to finish off the video talking about the other two social media stocks that I haven't really talked about so far in today's video, which is Snapchat, ticker symbol SNAP, and Pinterest, ticker symbol PINS. And so at this point, I do still think that Snapchat is the most impressive social media stock out there. I've talked about it on this channel for a while, how every time I see the metrics that they bring in, it is ridiculous, and I am very happy that the stock increased in price significantly this year. Looking at the numbers that I've found, there's some really impressive ones. They have more daily active users than Twitter with 218 million. 77% of U.S. college students use it daily, and their sponsored lenses can bring in 750 grand uh, just for one day of use. 
And so we've seen this on a lot of holidays. Uh, with the Super Bowl coming up, I'm very curious to see the numbers that they bring in for their revenue because I'm expecting a lot of advertisers, since there's a lot of political turmoil on Facebook uh, and Twitter, to maybe go towards the younger demographics and go to something like Snapchat. And so you can definitely see a divide of where advertisers are trying to spend their money. You have Facebook, which is mainly the older generation at this point, and just because it has such a large user base. You have Twitter, which in my mind is like focused on like 25 to 40 year old demographic. And then you have Snapchat is mainly the younger generation. So it's gonna be interesting to see if we have some advertisers kind of moving from maybe a Twitter and going down to a Snapchat uh, or from a Facebook down to a Twitter. So I'm gonna be curious to see that. And then when it comes to Pinterest, I'm kind of torn on calling it a social media stock. In the past, I have lumped it in there together because uh, a lot of the other news areas consider Pinterest to be a, uh, a social media stock. And I kind of do based off the fact that their main metrics that they use to compare their success is the same thing that we see with all the other social media stocks with uh, monetizable daily active users, average revenue per user, um, and just their revenue growth. So I do kind of put them into the same umbrella, but I would say that they are probably the safest social media stock of them all because everything I've seen, it's all a very positive website. And so it has a very different demographic than the other social media stocks of Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Looking at their one-year chart, it has been very stable and you don't see these uh, 10 to 15% moves that you see with something like a Facebook or a Twitter in the past year. It did benefit from the recent bull run that we've seen with these social media stocks. Uh, after there was some uncertainty on what the ad spending was going to be like in the last quarter and all of these social media stocks jumped because of it. And when you look at their numbers for ARPU, which is average revenue per user, it is the lowest at this point at only a dollar. So I do think that they have a lot of room to uh, expand in the future. And so at this point, I think that Pinterest is a great option, but if it was something that I used on a regular basis, it would probably be much higher on my list. But if I was going to have to rank these social media stocks, I'm going to put Snapchat at number one just because they've seen such impressive growth. I think there's a lot of potential for ad increases over time. I'm going to put Twitter at number two. I am a little worried about it based off of what we've seen recently with the news, but I am expecting this to be a fantastic buying opportunity if they maybe have a decrease in daily active users and the stock is likely going to fall 10 to 15 percent based off of the track record that it has which would make it a fantastic buying opportunity i'm going to put pinterest as number three ticker symbol pins it has just been so stable and i love the growth that they've been seeing and since their average revenue per user is so low i think they have a lot of room to expand in the future and then i'm going to put facebook as number four uh, it is the largest by far I, but it's just not something that i use i haven't been on facebook or instagram in like two plus years and i don't really love the platform so it's definitely something that uh, is a lot safer based off of the track record and when i put up the revenue it's absolutely beautiful but it's just not something that i enjoy uh, and i don't want it to be really a part of my portfolio so let me know what you thought about the recent news and let me know if you think these are buying opportunities for the uh, companies that fell with twitter being down around 11 percent and then facebook being down around seven percent so let me know what your thoughts are on the social media stocks and let me know what you thought about my rankings going snapchat twitter pinterest and then facebook thanks for watching i appreciate all the support and i will see you in the next video